Today I'm sharing with you a real budget breakdown for a single man living off of $65,000 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Hey guys, I'm Marissa and welcome back to my channel. Here on my channel we talk about life and money and how you can enjoy life while still accomplishing financial goals through the use of a budget. And so budgeting is very important to me. I share my household budget here on my YouTube channel, but I have since started another series here of sharing real budget breakdowns, sharing your budgets. So this is a budget that has been submitted to me and you can submit your budget if you'd like. I will have a Google form down below. You can fill that out for the potential of having your budget shared on my channel. I've received hundreds of entries so I can't share everyone's budget but really appreciate those of you have, who have submitted your budgets to share here. I think it's so fun with this series to see how other people are spending their money and this budget breakdown comes to us from a single man who is living off of $65,000 in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Am I saying Minneapolis correctly? Let me know. And also huge shout out to this guy because my audience is very much predominantly women. So I was very honored that this guy wanted to share his budget here on my channel. And also if your budget is shared on my channel, I do keep everything anonymous, will not be sharing names or anything like that. But, but yes, thank you to this guy for sending in your budget. So before we take a look at his budget breakdown, let's go through a little bit of background on him. So he's making $65,000 as an accountant living in Minneapolis, Minnesota. So he is single as in he's not married, but he is in a relationship. No kids, but he does have a dog. He also lives with a roommate. So his big financial goal right now is to pay off his student loans and also invest. So we're gonna see what that looks like in his budget. And as we review his budget, I will also be sharing some things that I would do if it were me. Now this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor, just for entertainment purposes. So here is the budget template that I'll be showing you guys with all of his information. If you wanna check out this budget template, you can actually get this on my shop. I will have a link to it in the description box down below. It's an instant download, works in Excel, Google Sheets, all the things. And this is the budget template that I use every month for my personal budget. I've just input his information in here so that we can view it um, in this template. So first off we have his income. So he takes home 35.70 each month. So this is after taxes and also after a 5% contribution to his 401k, which I love that he's doing this. When my husband and I were working on paying off debt, when we had student loans, we were still contributing 4% into our 401k with our employer because that is how much we needed to be able to get the employer match. And we didn't want to miss out on that free money that was coming with our employer match. So we put in 4%. Now that we are debt free and have been for years, I'm so grateful that we did this, that we still contributed to our 401k to get that match while we were paying off debt because time and compound interest was on our side. And so I have no regrets in doing that. So that's great. So his overall income then that he has to work with is 35.70. So this is going to be a zero based budget, which means all of his income equals all the money out, including expenses, debt, and savings. So now let's see where he spends all of that income each month. The first thing that we have here is his rent. I should change this to just rent. He, like I said, he has a roommate, so his portion of rent is $7.59. And you guys, look, that makes up 21% of his take home pay, which is amazing. I like to base the amount here between like 25 to 30% of take home pay, and he is well below that, so he's doing awesome. I love that he's renting a room with a roommate because imagine if he was paying double this to like have an apartment or, you know, have a space by himself then that would take away from other financial goals he could do. So if it works for him to like be with his roommate, it's amazing, he's keeping that number low and I love that. The next line item that we have is internet, which is at $25 each month. I assume he's also splitting that with his roommate. And then his phone is $40 a month. All sounds very realistic. Groceries, you guys, he's spending $125 a month on groceries. And I think this is great. As I've shared previously, I think that a great rule of thumb would be about $150 per person per month for groceries. And so he's even below that. I'm very interested to see what he eats though, because that's such a low grocery budget at 125 each month. Next we have is gas at $100 for his car. And then eating out, he has at $80 a month. And I think that that's pretty fine for like his income and where he's at, 80 bucks a month for eating out, going out with friends, doing that kind of thing. Also maybe feels a little different than with his like grocery budget of 125, but I think that that's pretty great. Next we also have his household at $30 a month for like toiletries and things like that. 
We'll come back to miscellaneous because I have something to say about this if it were me. And then we have gym. We have some membership things that he has here. So he has a gym membership, $25 a month. He also has Spotify for 10, Hulu for seven. He then budgets in coffee and convenience stores at $40 a month for coffee and convenience, which I love having this as a separate line item in his budget. I have shared for years mm -hmm. on social media that I love to go get Starbucks on Mondays. I go treat myself once a week to Starbucks. So I love that he has this budget in, in here. And then he has pet care. Like I said, he has a dog. So this is like food and monthly expenses for his dog, $30. And then he has another category here, health and wellness at 50. So I think that all that is great. The one thing that I would add would be a miscellaneous category. I always just love having a miscellaneous because sometimes there's like something random that could come up during the month and it's nice to have a separate place to put that. So he didn't have anything for miscellaneous, but I would add in like $30 for miscellaneous or something just to have something there. So next we have is the debt section. He has three debts that he is working on. The first is the federal student loan. So he doesn't have anything budgeted for it because federal student loans are currently still in deferment. So payments are on pause. You don't need to make any payments right now. So that's why he has nothing budgeted here. And then obviously no interest rate right now because there's no interest accumulating on the loans for federal student loans right now. So the balance that is remaining on that for him is 30000 and five dollars so the other loan he has is his private student loan he pays 121 dollars each month as like the minimum payment and an interest rate of 4.07 and right now has a balance of five thousand eight hundred ninety five dollars he then also has a car loan which he pays 272 each month as the minimum payment it's at a 3.49 percent interest and he has fourteen thousand one hundred dollars remaining on that loan so we're, we'll talk about this in a little bit because I know that he said that one of his goals is to be able to work on paying off student loans. So we'll see if we can add some more to these student loan payments. But he has $50,000 in total of debt. So now let's look at the savings section of the budget. These are all of the sinking funds, savings items that he has going on. So we'll come back to this one here, emergency fund. He's not putting anything into an emergency fund right now but he is putting $55 a month into a car insurance sinking fund. So he pays it, I don't know, either like annually or semi-annually. So $55 each month he saves to be able to then make that payment. Then he has a car registration fund at $20 a month to pay for that registration fee. Pet care, so this is in addition to the monthly pet care that he has, this is $35 a month to go towards like saving up for grooming or vaccines and things like that for his dog. So it's not like an every month thing. And then annual subscriptions, he saves $30 a month to then pay for an annual subscription of sorts. And then concerts or fun things, he has $20 a month saved for that. And then he said that he has $500 to $700 each month going towards a brokerage account. So a brokerage account is just like a non-retirement investment account. So he's investing these dollars, 500 to 700 each month is what he said. So if we just put in 500 here, then he's putting $660 into additional savings. So down here, we look at the total out. So this is calculating the savings and the debt and the expenses, all the money out. And then we have this other cell here that calculates the difference between the income and all of the money out. So he has a difference here of $1,166. And it should be zero because we want to work on that zero base budget and want to make this number zero. So he has 11, over $1,100 to put towards other things in his budget. So let me tell you what I would do if it were me. Again, not financial advice, but what I'd do if it were me. So first off, he said that he doesn't have an emergency fund, but he is putting money into this brokerage account. If it were me, I'd love to have an emergency fund. I think that it's so important to have an emergency fund because you never know if something random is going to come up that you weren't expecting. And it's nice to have access to that cash just really easily. I know it's hard when like savings accounts pay so little on interest and you could be getting, you know, potentially more in investments, but just having that peace of mind that comes with having an emergency fund is I think really important. We keep our emergency fund in a high yield savings account. So it earns a little bit more than, you know, just a standard savings account. Right now though, high yield gets you like half a percent, but it's better than anything. And we just look at that money as basically like insurance of 
This is here in case something goes wrong. So we keep about six months of necessary household expenses in our emergency fund, which is about $20,000. But while we were paying off debt, we kept about 3,000 in our emergency fund. And that would be there to cover any sort of random emergency expense that were to come up. So even when you're paying off debt, I think it's so important to have some sort of an emergency fund. And then once you're debt free, you can build that up to be larger depending on you know your circumstances and how your household is. So I took a look at all of his necessary things that he has in his budget and his needs total to be less than like $1,500 a month. So even if he saved $3,000, that would be like two months worth of necessary expenses, which could be a good start for an emergency fund. So I think that it would be beneficial if it were me to look at putting money aside into an emergency fund, open a high yield savings account, keep the money there and have it earn a little bit. But the point of the emergency fund is for it to be there for easy access. So I think that it's definitely an important thing to have. So if it were me, I would put extra money toward, you know, the emergency fund right now, or maybe even possibly pause the brokerage right now to be able to put towards the emergency fund. And then maybe in a couple months, then the emergency fund is done and then can start working on other goals. Like I said, he also is wanting to work on the student loan. So maybe once the emergency fund is done, then he could put, maybe if he still wants to put money towards the brokerage, maybe like, I don't know, 200, and then be able to put so much more to the student loan, 1587 to this loan. And at that point, he's going to be paying off this loan in just like a few months if it's less than $6,000. And he's putting, you know, $1,500 a month to that. So I think that he's doing really well with his budget because he's really limited all of his expenses from the big things like rent to even the little things, you know, like eating out or groceries and even the little bits of entertainment like the Hulu subscriptions that he has. So I think that he's done a very great job of being frugal with his money and therefore he has a lot of extra room to be able to put towards financial goals. What I love about personal finance is that it is totally personal and everyone makes different money decisions, which is great. But I think that he's doing an amazing job and really setting himself up well for the future. So a huge thanks to this guy for sending in his budget to share here on the channel. And if you wanna leave him a comment down below, maybe he'll read it and you can give him some encouragement to let him know how great he's doing with his budget. And if you wanna submit your budget, then you can submit it with a form in the description box down below and also check out this budget template in the description box down below as well and with that thank you so much for hanging out and watching today's video don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more budgeting videos and i will see you in the next one bye about to leave already packed